G'day and welcome back to my channel. The snow boat is coming along, don't worry, I'm still doing the armament for it. I've got to finish that flak 42 on the stern, but it's coming along well, that'll be the next video. But what I thought I'd do in the meantime, to give you something to look at, and also because I was so excited to get this, is look at this, flying sub. My friend David Eaves, he had two of these, one in 132nd scale, which was the Mobius, but then he had this Aurora one in 160th scale. Now, he was after a Mackie 205. I had two of those, which I picked up both with resin and PE and everything, two for the price of one. He kind of got this two for the price of one. So we both realized we had something the other person wanted. We had duplicates. So we swapped. He got the Mackie. I got the flying sub. I reckon I got the better end of the deal. So it's an old 1960s kit from Aurora. Would you like to see what's inside this? You would? All right then, roll the music. <laughs> Now, if you don't know why I'm so excited about getting this kit, it's because this was a TV series in the 60s and the 70s. I used to watch as a kid, and I loved it. Uh, not many Submariners liked it, because basically their scientific facts in it were all wrong. I mean, they got everything wrong. There's no way their submarines could have operated that way, and, and the divers getting out of the sub in the bottom of the ocean just wearing bloody you know, um, shallow water scuba gear. It was ridiculous. It was absolutely absurd. It was an Irwin Allen one. Same guys that made Lost in Space. So, you know, it was pretty bloody silly. The acting was a bit bloody woeful. The stories were absolutely stupid, but the submarines were fantastic. The main submarine is absolutely gorgeous, here's a pic. And this flying sub which comes out of it, completely implausible. I mean, there's no way you could have a submarine that in turns an aeroplane and, you know, well, who cares? Well, Jerry Anderson was doing it when they did UFO, that's how I had that. But that one's probably a little more aerodynamic than this. I mean, look at this big, great big glass bloody front of the thing. I mean, it used to dive back into the ocean, it was flying, and, you know, apart from the fact the shock when it hit the water would have killed everybody inside. <laughs> look. You have to suspend all disbelief and just enjoy for what it was. And the flying sub was always a favourite of mine. I always loved the look. It looks like a stingray, a big yellow stingray. So if you remember that show, you know what I'm on about. If not, you might want to look it up. The episodes are on YouTube, but it's pretty old and it's pretty tacky. Now you get on the side of the box an indication of what's going on. There is an interior. You get the motors, you get the cabin area, you get um, basically the two operators, Admiral Nelson and Commander Crane. Yes, you get those guys. And uh, it looks like they're in shorts. Yeah, good. Yeah, it must be very hot down the bottom of the ocean. Uh, and you get a little hook there, a little towing hook. I suppose that's if it's got to land on a flight deck of an aircraft carrier. Who knows? <laughs> and that's the front of it with those gorgeous windows, which, um, you know, would have been totally impractical for all the things it was trying to do. In the kit, there's a lot of nice plastic. There's a lot of nice plastic. It's already yellow, you don't have to paint it. <laughs> no, it's not too bad. Um, a sinkhole, yep, yeah, there's a bit of a sinkhole there. Um, goodness me, you know. It's not even an injection pin mark. It's actually a sinkhole. There's actually a sinkhole there. But you expect that, these old, old, you know. This was a re-release in 75, this particular one. There's a bit of burring, there's a little bit of stuff. You know, you got a bit of clean-up. You got to expect that with these old kits, and in fact, they'll even say here um, doesn't have a date. Copyright 20th Century Fox. There you go, Aurora Products. There you go. So that's going to be about the size of it. So it's a good size model, even in 160. So David's one in 132nd is going to be huge. So there you go. Oh, another little sink mark there. So there's a bit of bit of filling to do. We're about to get away with just whacking a bloody clear coat in this yellow. We're going to have to fill a few bloody holes. <laughs> oh well, to be expected. Not quite sure what's happening in the back here, whether those also are uh, injection or sink. I think they are part of, yeah, because of the moulding, there's some sink holes here as well. So there's, um, basically my sub is sinking, <laughs> which is what it's supposed to do. Oh, goodness me. Uh, windows? Yes. Well, there's a bit of flash there, a bit of clean up. Look, that's what this kit's going to be all about. Uh, you will lovingly work at it and tidy it all up and turn it into something really nice. Here is one of the top wings and it's not too bad. I wrote down a dry fit and it actually goes together reasonably well. Uh, a few more burrs and things to tidy up and clean off there. That's how it is. This is the base for the interior. So that will be your cabin area by the looks of things. I think it is. And then um, you've got your motors going to go in the back there. Comes with a stand which is handy because this thing ain't got no wheels. No. No, it really hasn't. <laughs> and they'll... Um, there's the stand other part there as well. 
technical term. And um, you've got a couple of these spinny things. And at first I thought they were kind of like motors, but who knows? They're just kind of, you know, roundy, venty sort of things. And they facilitate you being able to put the stand in. Because one goes underneath and one goes on top. But um, they don't seem to be connected to anything. Who knows? I mean, as it is, the front has a whole lot of these little vents here, which we assume... Um, were air intakes when it's in the air and water intakes and they would somehow feed the motors which are propelling out the um, the back of it. Oop, dropping everything. So yeah, this is on the front here. It would have sucked it through supposedly. But there's nothing in the kit to indicate that and there's... Um, ah look, it is pure fantasy and there's just no way this thing could have really worked. It's, um, it's just a joke. But it's pretty. It's very pretty. Okay, well I've got some bags here. I'll open those up. Let's have a look at the instructions and the parts in detail. I've done a little quick dry fit here, and uh, it's not too bad. There's certainly areas that again require some attention. It's um it's a bit wonky here around the around the bow, but um you know motor's got to go in there. But generally it doesn't fit together too bad actually. It doesn't fit together too bad at all. It's not going to require as much clean up as I thought. Uh, that front piece is a little bit warped. But one exciting thing about this uh, this kit is they made it so that you can open up and see that interior, uh, which isn't in there yet. Yes, use your imagination, yes. There'll be some interior in there. But um, that's uh, that's quite a nice feature. So uh, put that aside. Now, very old and yellowed out instructions. And uh, I love seeing the, um, the old sci-fi lettering. That was actually invented, that style, that font, was invented so computers could read checks. Yeah, they came up with a system of numbers and letters that a computer scanner, a little, an infrared, I think it was at the time, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm trying to remember back then. I was a computer programmer back in those days. And anyhow, it could just read these numbers and work out what checks were so they could automate systems in the bank, you know? So they made it faster for them to steal your money, uh, uh, bank your money. Yes, it was very clever. Now, um, you get a big blurb here, so that tells you all about it. Yeah, that um, the main submarine is called the Sea View. It, um, it escaped me. Yeah, so the Sea View is that lovely big submarine. Another pick. <laughs> and this popped out of, uh, of, of the bow of that, which is pretty stupid because that's where the uh, captain and, and uh, all the crew were inside another big glass sort of enclosure which would have been totally implausible the depths was going and somehow they managed to squeeze a great big yellow submarine in there as well and pop it out but there you go all right so um lovely old 1960s style sort of stuff instructions are pretty basic you're going to put the interior together here build your motors a little bit of um, superstructure, well actually that's framing and support frames and everything that go inside there for the interior. Uh, and then some bulkheads, they'll all go in. And then finally you'd put those top pieces on that I've just dry fitted. And they'll all go together. And you've also got clear panels here and the lights. Now that would lend this to actually putting LED lights inside this because I could light up those um, little high beam lights and have the interior lit. It shouldn't be too hard to do. And as far as the motor go, I don't know if we can actually get something happening there. Who knows? Paint scheme's pretty easy. Yellow, 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 yellow. Yeah, a little bit of dark blue, a little bit of black, a little bit of silver, just to sort of, um, you know, make it look good. But uh, there you go. Interestingly, this shape, all right, those of you that watched all the sci-fi back in the, the 1960s and 70s, do you remember the Land of the Giants? Do you remember that? Do you remember their orange spaceship? Well, have a look at this side on. It's basically the same one. In fact, I think the same model maker did both, or they pinched the design. And the Land of the Giants spaceship, it's a little bit longer. doesn't have the big um, manta fins on the side. But basically, their spaceship is just another version of this. Probably its Big Daddy. Yeah, Big Daddy one. So that's that. Now, let's just have a look at some of these parts. Well, obviously the stand, uh, just your basic little um, very wobbly Aurora stand, which I probably won't use. I'll um, basically put a uh, put a rod up its bum and suspend the thing over a, uh, over a nice piece of wood. I think it'll look much better that way. So, um, yeah, I mean, these stands were sort of okay, but they always wobble. They always wobble, and you'd have to spend a lot of time cleaning them up and doing things to them. So, um, yeah, and your kits would always fall off them. You know, you put them there, first earthquake that came along, all your kits had fallen in the bloody, you know, fall over the place. <laughs> little little rotating things, and this one will go on the bottom. So there you go, and there's a little slot there for the um, stand. Well, I'll, I'll change that and I'll put a, a rod. That way I can feed wires up through there as well if I'm going to light it. So that'll be the solution for that, as I've done with my, um, 
my spaceship Orion, which you guys haven't seen yet because you didn't like that one. <laughs> Too much hate mail on that. I don't know. Uh, no, I'll get it out. A limited audience. Yes, I know. These are more like toys. These are not tanks and aeroplanes and battleships and everything that are, you know, all the basic ex-military types get excited about. No, this is from my youth. This was fun. This is fantasy. This I really love, like the Stingray that I've got. I really love this sort of stuff. That's a bulkhead that goes at the back. Uh, that's for the um, thing that holds the engine in. Um, yep, yeah, that's sort of a, a bulkhead here that goes behind the whole engine mechanism. So that's interesting. These are your clear parts. And, you know, it's not like we're going to do an opacity test. Op opacity test. Put your teeth in there and get any. A see-through test. Yes. Um, we'll just basically give them a bit of um, future. And they'll look quite good. So you've got your headlamps. And it would be nice to basically funnel through an LED so that it lights those up. A couple of LEDs on those. And then maybe something in just a LED strip in the cabin. So that um, all the little guys, which are all suicided off their sprues, all the little guys, they would um, they'd pop up. Hmm, a little bit of cleaning up to do there. There's a there's a bit of flash. Yes, they're a bit dirty. They're a bit grubby, and they don't look like they've got shorts on. They painted them up in that thing as they had shorts, but they've actually got um, trousers. So here's um, here's your motors. No idea what the propulsion mechanism was with this. Probably like the um, Battlestar Galactica, it was Wombat Poo. Um, that seems to be the general um, science fiction fantasy um, propulsion method. Mainly because Wombat Poo is square. Did you know that's cubed? Wombat's actually poo in little cubes. I'm not kidding. Look it up. It's not a joke. It's a real thing. Look it up if you don't believe me. And that would be much easier to store than you know, if you're trying to do any kind of other sort of um, scat from animals because it's usually round or it could be sloppy. But no, Wombat poo is hard and it's square. Makes a perfect propulsion mechanism and it's full of nitrogen and all kinds of things. So there you go. Um, these are obviously the um, the jets for the, um, the motor. Um, well, there's three of them. So something else going on there. And uh, this is the ring of confidence. Who knows? Who knows, there's a little ring here. Ah, yes, that's um, that's going up here, which is kind of the top thing to go with this whole spinny thing. This fantasy part, who knows? Who knows, it's just saying, oh, look, there's a whole lot of injection points on that. So um, they could be injection points, or they could be features to take a wash. <laughs> Luckily, that's the one on the bottom. That's the one on the bottom. I don't know what the one on the top looks like. Uh, it's got them as well. So it depends. You could call them um, injection holes, or you could call them features. Don't know. I might try and find some photos of the, um, oops, of the actual um, model and, and see if they are. Not that I'm too worried. I mean, you really wouldn't be that worried with this. I mean, um, sinkholes, yes, with a bug of the shape up, they look horrible. So you know. And there's this thing here. Oh, that's a control panel. And we actually have. Let me find them. We actually have decals for control panels. So that's that one there. We have these little decals go with control panels to make them look all pretty. So, I mean, I could paint them up, but we'll see, see if those go on. So, we've got a little hatch things now. So, you've got a few little things. Engine room walls. Whoa. Yes, because everything's nuclear powered. Yes, back in, the, back in the 60s and 70s, they thought everything was going to be nuclear powered. You know, they're going to be nuclear powered toasters. Everything was going to be nuclear powered. Of course, it wasn't. Uh, a little seat. <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot of detail on this. It's very cartoonish, but then again, it is a fantasy submarine. These parts look a little better. This, um... This one, that actually is, is moulded nice and clean and crisp. I mean, it's a good thing if you can get the, oh, you can still get this, uh, Revel Monogram, release it still. Uh, but of course, the moulds will be pretty well rooted and the thing will be coming in flash from arsehole to breakfast. But still, you could um, you could buy it and build it, as long as you don't mind too much cleanup. This is the thought of the same trick with like Airfix, if you can get the old white box kits before they all got reboxed and remoulded and shuffled and rooterised, um, they're, they're quite good. So you've got lots of little valves and things, and there's uh, there's your little your coat hook there, you know, for hanging up your coat hangers. Another seat, more widgets. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know what that is. That might be the toilet, yeah. or the heads, as we'd say. And you get um, this is all part of that um, structure there that fits over the interior, so that it gives you some detail to open up for. And there's a ladder, so they can get out. You know, when they've had enough, and they say. Take five, they can just walk out of the submarine by that ladder. Oh, there's another one of those little motor pieces, a small motor there, and some other little you know, fantasy sort of pumps or something. It's all make believe. Now we've got a whole lot of um, bulkheads here, which will, will go in the interior. So that's good. And there's a, there's a door, um, some more control panels will take decals. There's those, those things, they, they take a decal. So there's not a lot to it. 
it's a fairly basic kit, but it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and it wouldn't be that hard to build. It's um, it's on my to do list, but I want to build that stingray first. Remember that stingray that I um, that I basically did a review for. Well, I loved that, so I'd like to build that stingray before I do this one. But this would be a fairly easy kit to build. Just clean up and you know fill a few holes and things. But there's really not a lot of parts. And uh, it's quite nice. And the interior is already there. I mean, with the Stingray, I've actually got a scratch interior. With this, it comes with an interior. So isn't that lovely? All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And um, if you'd like to see more old kits, I mean, my patrons have been asking me to get some of the older kits I've got out because I've got some old 1960 kits from, from Airfix, some cars and a plane and so some ships. If you're interested in this sort of thing, let me know. Let me know. And um, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe. And if you really want to help me out, uh, go to Patreon. And from as little as a dollar a month, you get to see these videos a day early and advert free. Yes, none of those pesky adverts. Yes, brilliant. All right, well, that's it. That's a flying sub from Aurora. So I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I'll be back, hopefully on the weekend, with the Schnell boat, all about how to build all the AA guns. That'll be exciting. All right, goodbye from Australia. And it's Harry from Harry Houdini.